Hey, what is up everybody? It's Axel here for Anime Uproar, and today I will be breaking down the strongest types of abilities available to Jujutsu Sorcerers and Curses, that being Domain Expansion. These are the special ultimate attacks which only extremely talented and powerful individuals can perform, and even in those cases, they are so draining that they rarely rely on them. And this is likely why even 150 chapters in, we've only seen 7 domain expansion users. Obviously there are more who can use it, but the point still holds, domain expansions are extremely rare and extremely badass. If you enjoy this video and want to see more Jujutsu Kaisen content on this channel, be sure to leave a like and maybe consider leaving a comment with who you'd like to see me talk about next. It will only take a second, but it's a huge help for the channel, and hey, if you haven't subscribed to Anime Uproar, make this the video where you subscribe, and be sure to click that bell and select all notifications. You can also follow Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. Finally, this video will contain Jujutsu Kaisen manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. In Jujutsu Kaisen, some of the most powerful techniques are actually barrier-based abilities. While all domain expansions tend to fall into this category, we kind of have to discuss the building blocks before we get into the real meat of domain expansions. The most simplified version of barrier techniques, or domains I guess could be considered the curtain technique. Yes, obviously this isn't a domain in itself, however curtains do allow the user to seal off an area from the outside world. This is typically used by Jujutsu Sorcerers to keep their battles against curses secret from the rest of society. However, it can also be used by curses to trap their victims inside. Despite curtains being one of the simpler barrier techniques, we've only seen about 5 people use them so far, with those being Gojo, Geto, Ijichi, Mahito, and Juzo. While I obviously wouldn't say this is a domain, the idea of separating one area from the outside is still present here. Curtains can also be manipulated in some ways, being made more like physical barriers almost. And similar to how Nen functions in Hunter x Hunter, if Jujutsu Sorcerers or Curses add restrictions to their curtains, they can make them incredibly powerful. For example, saying only Gojo is restricted would make it almost impossible for him to get through, and probably anyone who wasn't Gojo wouldn't be able to get through at all. Curtain users can also stand outside of the barrier to make it stronger, essentially protecting something else while leaving themselves vulnerable. This will also drastically increase the strength of their barriers. So those are the basics of setting up barriers within the Jujutsu Kaisen world, let's ramp up to domain expansions themselves. These can kind of be like filling a barrier with your own Jujutsu essence. There are several different variations of domains, however to this point we have only seen 7 domain expansion users in the series. And originally I was going to discuss them in order of how powerful they are, but like, all of them are pretty insane in their own right, so that's kind of out of the window, and I'm just going to have to feel my way through and explain them how I feel is best. Domain expansions involve the use of massive amounts of cursed energy to create what is essentially a pocket dimension within a barrier. These can be next to impossible to escape from the inside, however, with enough effort they can be penetrated from the outside. As it's explained, if the goal is to hold enemies inside, then the outer walls don't need to be as strong, only an insane person would enter into another's domain. That said, there are other ways to escape domains, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So what exactly does the domain expansion do? Well, aside from isolating the target and the user together, it also amplifies the user's abilities and allows all of their attacks to land on their opponents. Yes, all of them, no matter what. This makes them insanely powerful for just about anyone, however they are particularly powerful when used in tandem with abilities which are difficult to hit. That's because many of the abilities which are difficult to land tend to have that trade-off of having a more powerful effect. And a perfect example of this is Mahito. His curse ability enables him to change the shape of a victim's soul and morph their bodies into these horrific transfigured forms. However, there's a little bit of a prerequisite that actually goes into doing this. In order for Mahito to transform a soul, he has to actually touch the person. If the person has an especially powerful soul, that might take a few extra touches like with Nanami, while people like Itadori, who is more in tune with his own soul because of the whole thing he has going on with Sukuna, are nearly immune. 
Now, the condition of actually touching a target can be pretty difficult when you're dealing with what are essentially super people. Which leads us back to the idea of domain expansion. Mahito's domain expansion is called Self-Embodiment of Perfection, which, firstly, is probably the most disgusting domain ability that we've seen so far. Something about all those fingers everywhere just ugh, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Beyond just being creepy though, self-embodiment of perfection basically throws away the requirement of touching people to manipulate their souls and bodies, allowing him to do it at will. That said, the only time that we've really seen him try and use it was on Nanami, and that was interrupted by Sukuna, who immediately put Mahito in his place. And speaking of Sukuna, we might as well get into his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine. While we don't know all that much about Sukuna's abilities in general, we've only really seen him fight a few times and always very briefly, we have got to see him using domain expansions twice. First was against the Finger Bearer in Episode 4, which was kind of done so quick that we don't really know what happened. All we saw was that the Finger Bearer was sliced into many different parts. Later, in Chapter 119, we see Sukuna using Malevolent Shrine against Mahoraga, and we get a more in-depth explanation here. Sukuna's domain expansion has a range of 200 meters, which in comparison to the ones we've seen so far, is enormous. And that's because Sukuna kind of has a self-imposed condition on his domain expansion. That condition being that he doesn't actually have a barrier around the domain. The trade-off here being that people can escape, there's an open route, but the range is drastically expanded. The manga uses the description that creating a domain without a barrier is akin to an artist making a masterpiece not on a canvas, but on the air. Which is so goddamn cool. But what does his domain actually do? And for him, it's actually pretty simple. It just creates a never-ending assault of attacks on everything within the range. If the object is inanimate, he has a slash called Dismantle, which is just a slash, there's not a whole lot special about it. But in the case that the object has cursed energy, an attack called cleave is used. This will boost the strength of the cut depending on the toughness or amount of cursed energy that's required to actually kill them in one slice. And when we look at the brutality and savagery that Sukuna is known for, well, this barrage of indiscriminate, devastating slashes kind of fits him perfectly. And while we're on the topic of Sukuna, we might as well also cover the incomplete domain that the Finger Bearer had in Episode 4. While he wasn't able to create a full domain, it was able to generate an innate domain, which basically warped the reality of the building that they found him in. That being said, the innate domain doesn't really seem to amplify abilities, or to always make sure his attacks connect though. Back to true, completed domain expansions, we can look at Jogo's Coffin of the Iron Mountain, and if you're picking up a trend of all of these having really badass names, you're not the only one. Jogo in general is a curse which thrives using heat, fire, and explosive based attacks. We even saw him spawning a mini volcano on a wall that blasted at Gojo. As such, it's pretty fitting that his domain is within a massive volcano. Within this volcano, Jogo can manipulate the earth, launching spikes of rocks at his opponents, and just generally gets a leveled up set of abilities. Gojo even mentions how the average sorcerer would have just burned up upon entering. That said, he was using this against Gojo, so it's not like he really had the chance to do very much. The domain only really remained active for a short period of time before Gojo used his own domain, Unlimited Void, to completely suppress Coffin of the Iron Mountain. Speaking of Unlimited Void, much like Sukuna's, it's fairly unique. While just about every other domain that we've seen is strictly offensive in a very direct way, you know, barrage of slashes, changing your body, yada yada, Gojo's instead is more of an overwhelming attack on your senses. While the domain itself doesn't seem to be able to hurt you physically, it floods the target with so much information and sensory overload that they basically go into shock. Jogo describes it first as not being able to see or feel anything, and then realizes that that wasn't the case. He could actually see and feel everything. It was too much for him to process, and he found himself immobilized as a result. So while Unlimited Void is unable to actually hurt enemies itself, so far at least, 
it does open them up to any attack that Gojo wants to launch at them, and hypothetically, if you wanted to watch a whole video about Gojo's abilities and attacks, there should be a card in the top corner, or at least at the end of the video, for our discussion on just that topic. Shameless plug aside, let's cover the final domain expansion that we've seen in the anime with Megumi Fushiguro's Chimera Shadow Garden. Megumi's typical abilities involve summoning Shikigami from shadows, which is why his domain expansion floods the area with shadows and allows him to summon a slew of Shikigami all at once. This gives him a massive power boost, but it's still a fairly incomplete and new ability and pushes him to his absolute limits and exhausts him. I'm sure that the next attempt or two will kind of even out the edges and it'll allow him to be an even stronger sorcerer going forward. We do see one more in the anime, however, we don't really see it being used as an actual attack. Rather, we see it being used, well, as a vacation destination. The Curse Dagon's Horizon of Captivating Skanda, which I can assure you I have probably pronounced incorrectly, more or less allows him to produce a tropical beach. Which I mean, most times is just kinda chill. However, in the event he actually needs to use it offensively, it becomes what I personally would consider the worst one to deal with. Sure, it would be pretty crappy to deal with being transfigured or being slashed away or whatever, but this is genuinely something of nightmares, and that might just be because of my fear of open water, but who's to say? Dagon essentially turns the ocean within his domain into a machine gun that constantly fires Shikigami sharks and piranhas and other deadly fish in an endless supply at his enemies until they're devoured. Sure, the other ones might kill you faster, but this one I think I would like to avoid most of all. And finally, the first manga-exclusive domain expansion which belongs to the Smallpox deity, a fairly minor curse that we see quickly in the Shibuya incident. This seals enemies in coffins underground and then drops gravestones on them. After three seconds, if they haven't escaped, they will be infected with smallpox and die. This can be used repeatedly over and over again, and if there's more than one person in the domain, it will prioritize whoever seems to have the strongest cursed energy. This one is also Nightmare Fuel, but there's something about it that just seems kind of silly to me. Like, all the other death methods are pretty instant and direct, but there's something about, boom, you have smallpox, that just doesn't fit in with the rest of them. Now, all of these domains have one thing in common. They are extremely exhausting on the user. To this point in the series, it is extremely rare that anyone is able to use more than one domain in a day, however, it was stated that Gojo is able to do so. If a sorcerer is caught in a domain, they do have a few options, it's not just game over right away. Firstly, they can hope that someone breaks you out from the outside like Itadori did with Nanami, but even then, someone's gotta take the brunt of an attack. In this case, it was Sukuna which stopped it. You can also force your domain to overtake the opponents, similar to how Gojo did against Jogo. And finally, if you happen to be a weaker sorcerer than the curse you are fighting, you can make a hole on the outside of it by making a small domain within their domain and essentially leaving a hole behind you like a back door. Something we saw Gojo doing while in Jogo's domain was called domain amplification basically covering himself in an aura that negates any ability it comes into contact with, such as that giant chunk of rock that Jogo threw at him. And the last option are special abilities that certain families have, so for example, Falling Blossom Emotion is a secret art for the big three sorcerer families, which allows for a counterattack at the moment that the guaranteed attack lands. But that is just about everything we know about domain expansion and barrier techniques in general so far. If I had to choose a favorite, it would probably be between Gojo and Sukuna's. I know, kinda basic picks, but let's be real, they're pretty awesome. But what are your favorites in the series so far, and what kind of domain expansion do you think other characters might have? I would love to see Toto or Itadori's in the future, especially if Itadori had some kind of parallel or contrast to Sukuna's. I think that would be really, really cool. And finally, if you had a domain expansion, what would you want it to do? Let me know in the comments down below. These are some of the coolest parts of the series, and I would love to hear your ideas, so get creative. If you guys enjoyed this Jujutsu Kaisen video and want to see more, please leave a like, and if you're new to Anime Uproar, remember to subscribe and ring that bell. By selecting all notifications, you can guarantee you won't miss any future videos. That being said, if you did miss our previous video on Gojo's powers and abilities the other day, you should definitely be sure to go check that one out. 
And of course, you can also follow the Anime Uproar Boys at Anime Uproar on Twitter or Instagram, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. I also have a video on my own channel, Axel Beats, where I give my thoughts on the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole, so if you'd like to see similar videos here on Anime Uproar covering manga arcs, please let us know that as well. I want to give a big thank you to the patron squad over on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. First and foremost, I want to thank the patron of legend, the one acknowledged by Lord Twigo himself, Alpha Sigma, and our the one tier patrons, the ones who stand atop all clans, Ingrata, Pate Hefa, Al Jatal, Dr. Cortman, The Toasted Chi, Emperor Otaku, Spidey Life Tanel, Tungsten Tarkus, Baked Buddhist, Cody Hebert, and Monkey D. Quilly. And of course, our pro hero patrons, the one and only Gilgamesh, the red haired Raven, Angel Cruz, Anatoly Kazatsky, Very Gucci, Alicia Actor, Bonnie Parks, Hinokami and Water, Joanne Garcia, Ted No Ted, Fat Boy Games, Corey McGowan, Metal Mama, Deadly Saint, and Soul Rai Slice and Dice. Thank you all so much. If you do enjoy the work on this channel, you can go over to patreon.com slash anime uproar and support the channel for as little as $1 a month. If you do so, you will get your name featured in future videos alongside these amazing people right here. And of course, you'll also get access to the Anime Uproar exclusive Patreon Discord where we talk about anime, life, and of course, dank memes. So check out patreon.com slash anime uproar, link in the description if you're interested. Thanks again, and until next time, stay excellent.